Penny Dean's reporting. In the Philippines, the six-month-old administration of President Corazon Aquino has reached a critical point in its handling of the communist insurgency. Although some of the guerrillas of the communist New People's Army agreed to ceasefire talks last month, the killings have continued. And according to American intelligence sources, the guerrillas have increased their numbers by 6,000 since President Aquino came to power. Many in the Philippines' armed forces, including Defence Minister Juan Ponce Enrile, believe that Mrs Aquino is being too soft on the communists. And that concern was echoed recently by Indonesia's President Suharto when Mrs Aquino undertook her first official tour of that region. Can she persuade the communists to lay down their arms? Well, someone who can provide an answer to that question is Jose Maria Sison, founder of the Philippines Communist Party, who's currently visiting this country. Neil Billington reports. The 17-year guerrilla war has spread to the overwhelming majority of the country's provinces and the New People's Army is believed to influence or control one in five villages. No one is unaffected. With the killings continuing at the same rate as under Marcos' rule, the guerrillas present a real threat to the Aquino administration, and experts predict that if unchecked, the war would turn the country into another Laos, Cambodia, or Vietnam. It was therefore a bold move which led Cory Aquino to release over 500 political prisoners detained by Marcos as one of her first acts of public office. Defence Minister Enrile said he would not be responsible and the military were alarmed to see communist leaders like Jose Maria Sison go free. You cannot expect us to uh, take one single uh, uh, ceasefire. When they fire at us, uh, then we will have to fire back and pursue them, isn't it? That's the rule of the game. It's strong words like this which remind the communists that the army they're dealing with is still very much the same armed forces as under Marcos, and for that reason, committed communists are reluctant to lay down their arms. Giving up their arms is quite a difficult, if not impossible, objective. It would be quite uh, risky for uh, the revolutionaries to surface while uh, the armed forces of the Philippines uh, is not yet reoriented and uh, reorganized. Uh, they could be the subject of a surprise attack any time. It's so easy to create an incident and uh, those revolutionaries uh, surfacing could be uh, uh, wiped out just like that. But an incentive stronger than military brutality to joining the armed struggle is sheer sweaty poverty. These sugarcane cutters earn no more in a day than the price of a packet of cigarettes here. Real land reform is needed, but the president herself owns vast sugar estates and her ministers come from the same wealthy elite. Will she really be prepared to make the drastic changes needed? Jose Maria Sison, you were co-founder of the Communist Party, but you've recently formed a new party, the Philippines People's Party. Now, does this mean you've given up all thought of trying to shoot your way into power? I still believe that it takes several forms of struggle uh, to make the struggle of the Filipino people for national liberation and democracy to succeed. Well, the Partido ng Bayan will conduct one form of struggle the legal form of struggle, especially the, the electoral struggle. Does that mean you've renounced the armed struggle? In my case, I would still uphold the sovereign right of the people to fight oppression by armed force if necessary. Well, does that mean then that your new party retains links with the guerrilla New People's Army? There are no links between the Partido ng Bayan and the guerrillas that, uh, you, that can be considered culpable, subject to the penal provisions of the law. But there are links, as it were, because you still support the guerrilla cause, as you've just admitted. No, uh, there are no culpable links. The Partido ng Bayan has its own political and organizational integrity. It uh, intends to remain a legal mass party of the National Democratic Movement. So you're prepared to take your chances in an election now, say next year's parliamentary elections, for example? The party will. The party will deploy candidates in the forthcoming elec elections. 
You might have eschewed the path of violence, but do you still prescribe a Marxist solution to your country's problems? I consider myself still a Marxist, but to be a Marxist, one does not have to be for armed violence all the time, or on every occasion. Well, what do you see as the alternative? What do you want to achieve then in the Philippines? At the moment, there is what has been called the democratic space. There has been the substantial restoration of civil liberties. And therefore, there is a chance for various forces, including the national democratic forces, to present their views and their proposals for the solution of the basic problems of the people. So that's real progress then, in your view? There has been. What more needs to be done then? I think the Aquino government has to face up to the basic problems like uh, U.S. domination, domestic feudalism, and bureaucratic corruption. And it can gain the support of a party like the Partido ng Bayan if it demonstrates uh, seriousness. I mean, if the Aquino government uh, demonstrates that it is willing to solve those problems. But if she goes uh, too far in that direction along the lines that you would like, the, the lines of the broad left, does she not risk uh, some sort of reaction from the, the still very strong right-wing forces in the Philippines, and in particular the armed forces? I think the growth of strength um, of the national democratic forces would serve to guarantee and enhance the relative stability of the Aquino government. We must remember that the United States allowed the Marcos fascist dictatorship to fall because of the fear that had Marcos stayed any longer in power, the armed revolutionary movement and the entire national democratic movement uh, uh, sh would become stronger and would uh, move towards victory. And uh, the United States would not give the go signal to any fascist military group uh, to seize power because this would bring back the Marcos type situation. This so would accelerate the armed revolution. So would you be prepared then to, to work alongside the Aquino administration, not to undermine it, at the risk of provoking some sort of right-wing coup? We are prepared to support the Aquino government, especially against attempts to restore fascism. We would support the Aquino government to the extent that it is willing to uh, work for the national and democratic interest of the people. And we are also willing to criticize the Aquino government where it has shortcomings with the end in view of encouraging um, it to uh, well, well, lastly then, work for the interest of the people. How far do you think you will be able to go in making those sorts of criticisms without, say, landing yourself back in jail? Well, uh, um, we can even go as far as to ally ourselves with the Aquino government on positive measures in the interest of the people. And whenever we make criticism, it would be uh, with some amount of restraint so as to maintain the alliance. Jose Maria Cisson, thank you very much. Yes. Neil with Filipino Communist Party founder, Jose Maria Cisson. Coming up.